Hey everyone, uh, welcome to Tribe Talk interview number four. I'm here joined by Jeff Kutsi. Uh He is a ATP doubles coach and a former ATP player. Um, he actually coaches the number one doubles team in the world uh, currently. Jeff, how are you? I'm fine. Well, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, it, I was doing a little research on you, obviously, before the interview, um, and, uh, you know, a lot of that comes up, Robert Farah and uh, Juan Sebastian Cabal, who you've worked with for uh, how long now? Um, it's going now the seventh year, six years, uh, year. but yeah, I started December 2013 for three weeks wow. as initially to, okay. uh, as a trial, as a trial basis and they enjoyed what I was doing. So we, they said, okay, by the second week, okay, we would like you to go to us to Australia and to see, and yeah, I guess I'm, I'm still here with them. That's awesome. Um, yeah, that seems like a lot longer than a lot of players keep a coach around. That sounds like yeah. a really good relationship. Um, so w one thing I saw in one of your interviews, uh, you said that when you started with them, they were 60 in the world. And now uh, they've gotten to number one. They won the U.S. Open last year. They won Wimbledon last year. Um, talk us through a little bit of that process. and wh Where do you think you were able to provide the most value for them as a doubles team? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, when I started with them, we actually started at the, uh, uh, in December in Miami um, at the IMG Academy. I, I actually didn't know, know them. I heard of their names. I just stopped mm -hmm. my career probably uh, prior to that. Uh, I saw uh, the, the names on the ranking, uh, heard about them, but I, I'd never met them before. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Scott Davidoff, that he was also my coach from time to time, said that these guys were looking for a coach and your name came up. Uh, do you mind if I give your numbers? I said, sure. Uh, let's see what comes out of it. And then Robert uh, reached out to me and I said, sure, I'm actually working for an academy in Germany at the time. At the time, it was the Schüttler Vaska Academy in Frankfurt, Germany, but now it's only Alexander Vaska Academy in Germany, which I enjoyed because uh, I spent a little bit of time there as, uh, towards the end of my career and I, I like to be open. So I, I did that and I said to Alex, look, this opportunity came. Most of the players that I'm working with were singles guys, uh, futures, challenger level, but uh, uh, I'm gonna give this a try. Um, and I'm gonna go to the States uh, with them and just see how, where it leads to. He said, sure, because I've always been open with him. So when I first saw them, uh, they basically just stopped probably not a long time ago playing uh, doubles, but were singles players. Same like me. I got to like 184 in singles, but for various reasons, injuries, I stopped playing. So when I saw them, I looked at two individuals playing doubles, but playing singles doubles, if you know what yeah. I mean. So yeah, it, yeah. it's kind of like it's kind of like you're looking at the uh, singles guys playing doubles, and it's completely different. Mm -hmm. I mean, and uh, and uh, again, I, I didn't know them, so uh, I said to myself, "Okay, what do you guys want to play? How do you want to play?" I personally feel that you guys at this modern game should be hybrids. You should be able to serve and stay back because you were relatively good singles players. I mean. Uh, you can rally from the back, but uh, the most important thing for me is uh, to be able to improve your net game and your servant volley game so you can switch that around whenever you need to, but you need mm -hmm. to be comfortable. But obviously, when I started with them, you start as a trial. You know, you don't, you're not going to just suddenly throw all your cards out right. and, say, and I just kind of basically give them the gist of things that this is potentially where I think you guys could get. I see there's definitely potential. Uh, but this is the way I want you to play that I see the modern game of doubles going. But if you can maybe uh, 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 do a little bit of both, be hybrids, then you can definitely can go because now you can play on clay. But obviously I can tell that you, you, the best service is not grass court, which ironically, obviously that was their first slam. And it's the one that we, we've always struggled on, which personally I think they should have done better, but they didn't have that inner belief on it. So there's a few things. Uh, that uh, that are when I started with them, and then um, 
again, two different personalities. Rob is more, you know, uh, um, all over the show where Kabali is more steady. And then we worked a lot on the mental part for Rob. And then eventually I just got, you know, to uh, long story short, uh, I started now with them and I said, look, now that you've taken me on board, certain things need to change. And obviously mm -hmm. that, as you know, it takes, uh, it, it, it's a process. So I said to them, let's have a plan. What do we, and Rob was actually the one that says, if we start this, I want to finish it till the end. I want to really see how far. I don't want to be one of those where if something goes wrong, we blame the coach. We trust you. We like what you do. So let's go in all out. So that's, wow. that's basically how I started with them, which is kind of, we looked at a long process. And obviously I've had new, numerous times that no, they'll never win a slam. Uh, this one is this, that one is that. They all over the show. Yeah, they're just going to be one of those. And, and that's what I like. When people start telling yeah. me that, I'm, I'm a person that said, okay, I'll prove you wrong. I'm going to show yeah. you. And then it makes me, because I've been told I would never make it in tennis because I'm too short, I'm too this. And I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. that's probably the last thing you should tell me because now I'll, that right. I'll make it my mission <laughs> to show you. you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so basically I took that same mentality as a player and I then put it in my guys because I've had numerous other offers come with us, you know, we'll, we'll show you how to want a win a slam. There's a few guys that's won a slam, like, come yeah, on, let's come, come to, come to the winning circle type of thing. Right. You know, and I'm like, okay. And, 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 and that's all I needed because now I'm going to say, guys, look, you definitely have the potential. You've shown me. Now it's a matter of how can we win six matches over a course of two weeks? What mm -hmm. can we do? And there's obviously that's some brilliance came in and, that, and it was just a matter of getting through that last hurdle. And it's like anything, well, you know, once you've put yourself so many times in semifinals, you then have to start asking you that question, when is it? We've yeah. done the finals two years ago. So when, when are you going to really start taking that, that next step? Right. My, personally, my personal feeling, this should have been done two years ago. I, I felt like they could have won a grand slam right. earlier on. But yeah. yeah, but obviously there was one or two things and it didn't work out. And we never would have thought that you would win two in one year. So, and then, you know, it, it sometimes it's just the way things work out for you. Right. Wow. Um, so, so yeah, there's a lot to unpack there. So one, one thing that stood out to me that you said is uh, Robert said he wanted to stick it out, even if things kind of go downhill for a little bit or something like that. I feel like, um, and you would know better than me, obviously, but I feel like on the pro tour, there's not a lot of kind of perspective like that. It's like, um, if I have a bad three months or a bad six months, it's like, okay, something's wrong. Got to change. Can't trust this process. Mm -hmm. Like new coach, new this, new trainer, whatever. Um, but it seems like he's got a, a good perspective and a good sense of like, I guess, loyalty to you as well. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 well, that's exactly what you said there. You know, you don't get that often. I mean, we yeah. can go back to say, uh, yes, Rafa has changed over the last few years, but he's always had Uncle Tony. Now he's always had the team. Same with Federer, but now you can bring in as a consultant, you bring in, but you still mm -hmm. stick to your same team. With me, we had this thing. It's like, guys, let's stick together. And, yeah, I, I work with a few teams, a very good friend of mine, Raven Klaas, and that obviously – uh, Stefan is, uh, we, they brought me in with Rajiv Ram, uh, just to somebody, uh, mutual, but, um, you know, I've learned that was a great experience for me. The next phase of a few players that I had and Roger took out, but then the boys just said to me, look, we really want just you and to focus. And I said, okay, let's come up with agreements. We did it and then no problem. And that's when sure. last year we, we, we decided, you know, let's, let's give it a try. And because the mm -hmm. main reason I did it that way, because I felt like I wanted to see what I can get out of them and realize to them, this is what I want. I want that discipline all the time from you guys. I don't want you guys to look back in your careers. Oh, they, they, they could have won a slam. They could have been, I said, let's not go down the road. So I basically put it in perspective, uh, perspective for them. How do you want to be viewed when your career is done? that you've mm -hmm. given everything, you, you, you've done whatever it uh, uh, takes to make it, number one, uh, winning slams, whatever your goals are, but at least let's do it the right thing. Let's be professional. And in terms of what I want from you guys, 
is uh, if we're going to continue this the long haul certain things need to change so we changed that two years ago in terms of okay diet i don't get what i really want from you guys sometimes i feel like i want that extra but either you're tired or am i pushing you too much but i feel like there's enough in the tank but not just one day but day in and day out that's what i need yeah. from you guys so all credit to them also and uh, and and uh, the team around them you know, with our physio, the trainer, everybody, you know, it's not just me. It's a whole team thing. It's all sure. about a team. It, it takes one individual to sort of mess it up. But if we buy into this, this professionalism, you buy into it, it's a team effort. And it yeah. doesn't matter if it's in doubles or it's singles, it's, it's your team. You cannot right. make it in this game if there's no very supportive uh, team around you. It's very, very difficult to do it. So basically that we changed the diet, everything in the, in the best shapes. And I said, you know what? Yeah, uh, we have this thing. It's, it's doubles players. I said, let's not be yourselves that way. Let's just be yourselves as tennis players. How professional right. can you be on a day in a day in job? I said, that's all I'm asking from you guys. I'm away from my family. Uh, I want to ma make sure it's worth it. Mm -hmm. you, you guys have a family. I said to Gabal, you have a family. Rob, you're going to have a family one day. What do you really want? You have the opportunity right now to be able to do what you can and make history. What do you guys want to do? But if you decide we could do it, we have to do it day in. Yeah, there's going to be days and weeks where you don't feel well, but that's my job to make sure we professionally and push and push. And that's why Rob said, you know what? I don't want to keep on switching. So let's do it. You know, we, right. we, we, we've been through so much. Let's just stick through it. Eventually it will come. And he, I mean, with the all belief, Jeff, and it's going to come, it's going to come, you know, and it, and it was just a matter of time. Like I said to many people, I thought personally this would have happened two years ago, but I'm like, oh man, is, yeah. are we going through this? And, 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 you know, as you know, you get to that stage when sometimes you're there too many times and then you start self doubting yourself. Am I really good enough to win a slam? So right. I didn't want it to get it to that stage. You know, I was like, man, we're knocking at the door. We're knocking at the door when it needs to come sooner than later. And I've always told them, you guys put so much pressure that you grew up on clay. I think you will probably win your slam where you least expect it. <laughs> and, 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 and yeah, and last year in like, and again, again, if you look at rankings, they should have been the one. Even the year before when uh, Venus and Harrison won it, again, we put ourselves in a situation in the last four where we, the, we were the favorites. We didn't win. Again, yeah. last year, if you look at it in paper, we should have won. But it's just, yeah. I think last year was a difficult one because uh, my eldest brother passed away the night before and I told mm -hmm. them, uh, can I have a meeting with you guys? Uh, I'm here till the end because that's what my brother wanted. But uh, they said, and I felt like they, they, they did it for me, which was mm -hmm. wrong because obviously afterwards, I mean, I was supposed to be the one that's crying, that lost his brother, but they were like very emotional, but sorry, we couldn't do it for you. And then I'm like, man, I think they've done, they, they, they tried too hard for me. They weren't the same. Yeah. They weren't the same players that I saw the first few matches. And then I went back, you know, I went back to home and to a funeral. And it's just amazing world how certain things work out. I got there late because of the funeral was on a Saturday. So I only got to Queens like the Wednesday. They started, luckily, they started playing Thursday. They lost to Lopez and Murray, which ended up winning the thing. But yet, the way they played, I'm like, man, guys, I told you we need to start changing how we play on grass. And I said, I don't like how you play. So I didn't spend a lot of time, although I told them what to do in the beginning phases. And mm -hmm. we basically just made a critical decision. Yeah. And that's where I feel like sometimes you've, you get those moments where everything just gels. Right. We, like weren't supposed to play Eastbourne. And I, and I said to him, let's just make this decision based on emotion. Let's sleep on it. But I personally feel like it's, you don't have to take all your clothes. It's an hour and a bit train ride. Let's just go play a match or two before Wimbledon. What are we going to do? It's mm -hmm. like 13 days before you play your first match at Wimbledon. You only start the Wednesday. Yeah, you lost Thursday. So next Thursday and you possibly, that's the earliest yeah. Wednesday. So, so I would rather get another match in. And I said, you know what? Let's go train at Wimbledon. Spend some time there. We spend a little bit of time at Queen's train there. Then the, once the courts open, we practice at Wimbledon. And I said, let's wait for the draw. Okay, the draw came up. We play Murray and Mello. I'm like, perfect. So now we know for sure we're only going to play because Murray's in the final. We're only going to play Tuesday. And guess what? 
Murray is a big name. We're going to play or possibly on center court. It's going to be late evening, same as what you guys played him there. So let's start practicing late afternoons. So that's what right. we did. Practice yeah, late afternoon, rhythm. similar rhythm. And because the grass is so much different during the day compared to when the sun goes down, it's slippery, oh, it's completely different. Yeah. So I said to him, let's start doing that because there's a very good challenge. And if you play during the day, bonus. But let's practice at a time we don't we normally think it's practice. Happen, yeah. and, and basically, I said, okay, this is what you guys need to do. I want to change. You know, Melo, okay, yeah, you don't have, you, he's not play, you're not playing against uh, 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 Lopez now, lefty. So, different strategy right there. But let's start this way the first few games and we work. And that's what we all we worked on. And mm-hmm. it paid off. And, and suddenly, you know, they won that first tournament on grass. And uh, yeah, and the rest is history. Then they won, I mean, uh, Wimbledon, although they were match points downs. But uh, to be honest with you, Will, you, you get a sense of when you get to after that quarterfinals when they, they, they beat Roger de Castro, which was difficult because obviously I've coached these guys and it was long match. They came through it, but, you know, match points down. I think it was four or five, but all good serves or, uh, or ace or something, but good quality points. And mm-hmm. after that, when we played Raven and, and, and Venus, I said to them, you know, I just have a feeling about this and Kabbalah, you know, you know, you, you sense these things and we yeah. never, a lot of people probably didn't give us a chance because now we're playing uh, Vaseline and Mahout, great experience, especially on grass. And I said again, yeah. boys, I like this. I like this. And the boys were so ready for it. Even when the roof closed, yeah, you would have thought, okay, wow, the roof is closed. But it's again, well, where certain things in your career when you've played, because I remember Rob playing a match there on the roof close, mixed doubles, great memories. So he's already, yeah. you know what, uh, Cabal, this is what you do. This is what Cabal's never played under roof, but let's do this. So basically when it was two sets all long, we were lucky enough because when the roof closed to get to, to have like a five minute chat with our players. And there, I mean, you've played almost four hours. You're not going to come up with tactics. Right. <laughs> you, basically, you basically, all I'm saying, guys, the Got only it. reason we're still here, you should have won it in four, but the only reason we're here is because you did not play aggressive enough on that break point. So because I said right now, whenever you get a chance, just take the chance. Don't play safe. That was my yeah. words thing. Don't play safe. You have to play to win. And you guys are already in a situation where you put yourself, uh, where you can do unbelievably well, but Trust yourself and do it. You'll feel better about yourself doing it that way instead of the other way. Play it safe. We've done that before. Right. So why not do it this way and see what happens? You never know. And yeah, yeah. They, they, they broke. And, and then obviously you're thinking they broke and then they got uh, broke. Back. I'm like, oh no, let's not go <laughs> through this again. And then you're like five <laughs> serving for it. And I'm like, love 30. I'm like, oh no, please. <sighs> I mean, why do you always do this to me? Don't give me that drama. Can it just be straight cut? But then, you know, as again, Kabbalah is so chilled and everything, and I serve that. And I said to you, we've always talked about match points and situations when you have it, you have to take chances. And that's what they did. You know, if you look at the last two points and everything, they took the chance and it all worked out for them. Yeah. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just happy to be, to be uh, part of that. Yeah. Yeah, there's some good points there. Um, one thing I noticed that you talked about is, is there... Uh, you said their diet has changed. So mm-hmm. it's all, it, it almost sounds like you, you kind of came in and said like, okay, let's say the goal is to get to number one in the world. Let's break up uh, a doubles team into all these different categories. There's your diet, there's your baseline play, there's your serve, there's your return, there's your ability to get to the net, there's your volleys. And y'all might be one in the world from the baseline, but you're, 50 in the world in diet and you're 35 in the world in serving and staying back. Um, Mm. Or I mean, serving and volleying. So let's work on diet and serve and volley. Mm. And it sounds Mm -hmm. like maybe you, you kind of took some of those different categories that they were like struggling with and said, Hey, let's focus on that and get to top five in every single one of these. Yeah. Yeah. And that all kind of And that's what you got to do. Mm-hmm. That's what you have to do to be number one. You can't just be sort of in one area. You need to sort of be balanced and strong in all those areas. And especially when it came, I said, how come this is the worst slam you guys have done? You know, third round was the best. I said, 
The only difference is look at this match when you lost last year. There's all the matches that I've been with you guys. It's not them playing better. It's you guys messing mm -hmm. up. And then those guys end up being semis or better. So how yeah. do we change that? So the right. whole mind just shifted. It's supposed to be, okay, if you struggle to return, let's work on this. We added the chip uh, lob a lot more in the chip return just to get in the point. Instead of them liking when they return both back, I said, no, let's start having an aggressive mindset. You all up. We're going old school here. Everything mm. is up. We do this and everything. Just, I just brought completely a bit of old school, some of the new school in and, and just for them to be complete if they, right. if they feel like it. And because I said to them, it's best of five, no need to panic. It's a long, long time. Even if you go yeah. a breakdown, a set down, no need to panic. This is a long, long wait. It's like, how do you want to run a 5,000 meter? You're not going to come out the gates. You're going to pace yourself. You're going to be smart how you play. So you, right. you can't play it, play it like a, like a, 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 a 1,500 meter, you know? You've got to be smart. Focus on the serves. Yeah. Do the basics right and everything. But throw in these messages. Do that. Do that. And, and see what happens. And that's why basically... Right. But that also started not just on the grass court season. That started already beforehand, which we sure. kind of brought in where I said, look, for certain things that we need to change, I want to do 10 minutes of this extra or 10 minutes of that extra. And that's what we've done. And it all, yeah. you know, pay, paid off. But then it's it, it just good timing. Yeah. You talked about the uh, two back on the return and, and how the game has transitioned a little bit, um, especially at the pro level. I watched an interview a few months ago with uh, the Bryans and they talked about how it's become more difficult to serve in volley because the returns mm -hmm. have gotten so big. Um, and a lot of the reason for that maybe is the string technology allows people to take bigger cuts and keep the ball in the court. Um, mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? On, on like playing two back on the return. It sounds like you don't like that um, versus getting to the net or serving and staying back. Um, how do you, you mean, think about you mean, all that? You mean when you when when somebody returns, the other partner's also back, or so, so yeah, when you mean yeah. How, yeah. how do you think about that as well I mean, as just I, getting I, to the net in general? I think you need to be able to do both these days. You okay. need to be able to be and not just just oh, I'm in panic. I do it. You need to be comfortable with it. I mm -hmm. like the idea because I take, for example, my guys, whenever somebody serves, they're always back. First, second serves because that's, they're going to the comfort zone. And I mm -hmm. said to them so many times, let's change practice. You're just going to be up because yeah. I don't want to be able to tell them, hey, go up or something. And they don't really know practice it that much. So they mm -hmm. have to feel comfortable with it. So again, with, 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 uh, with serve and volley, they needed to, to be comfortable doing that. But the one thing we improved was second serves. You need to be, have a good second serve if you're going to serve and volley all the time. But you need mm -hmm. to be able to change up. If you go down the tee, yeah, the angle is a little bit difficult to hit it up the line on the deuce court. But what do you add then if you're the returner? Add a slice, add a chip lob, take away your opponent. Is he lefty or righty? Well, I'm not going to lob so much if a Lopez serves Cabal T on the disc code, because guess what? It's going to be his forward and smash. So how do we do that different? We have to come up with something else, you know? So there's various depending on who you play, but you need to practice as you can play pretty much any, anyone, a lefty. There's, there's certain strategies sure. you need to be able to do, but you have to be comfortable. It's no use. We talk about the strategy and stuff and you don't practice all these things. It's not going right. to work consistently. You might be lucky with, few matches here and there, but I'm talking about week in and week out. And some weeks, other guys play better than you, you know, especially with the deuce, no air and everything, it becomes very difficult. But well, for me, the most important thing, it's still, whether we're talking about now, five, 10 years from now, the game will change, but the basic stays the same. That remains mm -hmm. the same for me. You make a good first serve at your spot. You come in, you stick your volley to make at a certain spot. You're putting yourself in a winning situation. If your right. partner can take that off, strategy, how do you do it? So all those things, it becomes, if you, if you focus on the basics and you master the basics, I still believe whether it's now or five, 10 years from now, you're still going to have a very good chance of winning consistently throughout the year. Very right. good amount of matches. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like... Um, it, so for like a kind of a go-to strategy... 
you're telling them, hey, let's start with the serve and volleys and adjust if we need to, like then serve mm -hmm. and stay back if you're struggling with it. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you you gonna have to see if somebody suddenly returns uh, well. If you want to change up, yeah. and and if you don't want to change up sitting back, let's change up by playing normal poaching, by playing eye formation here, playing this. Yeah. I mean, there's so many variations, variables, but you'll be able yeah. to feel comfortable with it. There's right. many variables, but you need to be fe feeling comfortable doing it. And sometimes right. you have to bluff. Sometimes, you, you know, it's like poker, you have to bluff. Maybe there's something you don't like that particular play, but that person knows it. So there's a lot of the stuff that we worked on with Rob as well. Everybody knows he's got a better back end, but you need to be able to, that's the one part we worked on. So he can serve and stay back on that side, not only this side, because mm -hmm. you need to be able to vary things, you know. But yeah. again, those things, you got to start practicing and working on it and then do it in practice before you start doing it in a match. Right, you need to be exactly. able to do that. And that's where you have practice and we do these things. And uh, as of late, uh, uh, they've enjoyed me more hitting with them one-on-one -on -one separately. So we try and mix it up and keep it fresh. Either we play practice set, depending on, but I mean, last year, man, geez, if I have to tell you how much I served throughout that clay court and grass court season, my <laughs> arm was about to fall off. We would say, <laughs> okay, we would serve to the T X amount of serves. Body, this. Okay, now that round is done. Now we do chip returns. Okay, chip, lob. Okay, now we do four. I mean, it just felt like I was, I, and, and <laughs> that's where I'm like, all right, if this is what it takes for them to win a slam, I'm happy to do it. But then I needed to go into the gym and do my stuff, my, right. my uh, uh, arm, uh, arm exercises off. and everything. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I'm not used to that. Although I'm standing three quarter, but I'm not used to, you know, and obviously the balls are heavy. If you know about on the grass, it's a little bit more heavy. So it, 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 okay. it took a lot. But yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, well, you just got to a stage where you just got into a routine and that worked for you. And that's what we did. Yeah. Awesome. So I want to transition a little bit. Um, t tell us a little bit about your story. How did you get started in tennis? Um, you said you played some singles and eventually transitioned to um, focusing on doubles. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, I started, uh, you probably, were, even if you Google it, you might not even find the place I'm from. It's a place called Okip. It's O-K-I-E-P. And it's in okay. the northern Cape of South Africa. Very, very small town. I mean, we're talking about 5,000 people. And basically how I started was in our backyard. You know, we, there was nothing there, gravel. And we're like in the desert. There's like gravel and that's our backyard took away some of the stones, made uh, a tennis court on that, put two poles, took orange bags and made mm -hmm. a net out of that. And I made my own racket, uh, my racket out of wood. That's me. That's how I what, started. What inspired so, you to build a tennis court? Did you just like hear um, about it or did somebody play? The, I mean, back then, the only channel we had was, uh, we had one channel and luckily back then, uh Wimbledon showed <laughs> so that's how oh, I okay. really like okay I'm like okay wow that's nice that and fun, obviously yeah. my brothers and them played a little bit so we started like that and I started a little bit late at eight and a half nine so we did that and then eventually um uh, I played a tournament or two but I mean obviously back then in that era I wasn't allowed to play because of uh, apartheid you know mm -hmm. because of the color of my skin so I'm like okay I didn't know about this okay let's see and then eventually when I got the chance to play I made semifinals. I'm like, hmm, this good guy. And I found out the guy's number one in the country when I lost him like three and four or something. I'm like, I didn't like that. And my brother just said to me, okay, you know what? This is what happens when you practice two or three times a week because I also love playing soccer. So I said, all right, okay, when is the next tournament? Okay, let's do this. For the next three months, I'm on the court every day and then we'll see what happens. And then I ended up winning the tournament and then the federation saw me. So I got brought to Johannesburg. And then the, after three years, the federation uh, sort of went bankrupt and the coach that was with me, he was actually uh, lived in Tyler, Texas. So that's why he got me that scholarship at the John Ecom Tennis Academy. So I finished my last two years of high school there. And then I, pro, uh, I turned pro in 96, played singles up until 2000, got to like 184, but I never had the money. I, come, I, I mean, I come from a development background, poor family and uh i never had i would have probably have liked to have seen if i had a bit of the money to see if i could have cracked top 100 in singles i personally think i i, I probably could have because mm -hmm. you know I, I beat a lot of the guys like 
Taylor Dan, James Blake in that era playing challenges. And obviously, look, I'm not saying I'm going to be a James Blake, but I mean, I just wanted to just see if I had the same opportunities, how yeah. I would have fared. So, but I'm, I had to make a financial decision with the injuries I had. I'm like, okay, let's see. I, I hear that can, you can still make money in doubles. So let me see. And then it just happened, well, that I just really did well in doubles just right away. Yeah. Because people always told me, man, I think you're going to be an awesome doubles player. Even when I played singles, I won some tournaments, but it never, I didn't want to go that route yet because I wanted to see singles. And it just, it just automatically happened for me where I just became really good at it. And I enjoyed mm. it. And I'm like, oh, wow, I'm actually starting to make money. So yeah. let me try it again. And then again, and then and obviously... Uh, I, that was 2002, and then uh, we won uh, Adelaide, which was, I guess, uh, now this year is a little different, Brisbane, the first tournament of the year, and made semis of Australia. Uh, and then, unfortunately, after that, I was in a bad car accident where my little four-year nephew passed away. So it took me months. I had to learn, basically, well, to walk from scratch. I, mm. And then, but, uh, I mean, it took me a whole two years, three years to, to sort of, get back to where I want. And uh, I made the, the, the top eight after a few years and stuff, but a lot of wear and tear. And then afterwards, I'm just like, that's it. I don't enjoy it anymore. So that's yeah. why I kind of stopped at, uh, I had surgery on my knee in 2010, tried a little bit in 11, and that's where I stopped at like uh, September day in 11. I said, okay. And that's where I contacted the Shoot Lebaska Academy. I said, look, I'm thinking about taking a protective ranking. Uh, let me know if I can, I would love to be part of your academy, working with the Futures and the Challenger players. And he said, Jeff, uh, I was actually at Heathrow Airport flying home and I just needed to have a break. And when mm -hmm. I switched on my phone, when I landed, he said, can you start tomorrow? And I was like, no, no, give me a, I need a good six weeks where I just need to clear my mind and then we yeah. can chat again. And, and yeah, six weeks later, I, I started working for them until uh, end of 2013 where I got this uh, offer from Cabal and Farah, which now obviously I'm still doing. And uh, yeah, so it, it's, it's been good. And now, you know, obviously I wanted to help a little bit more of South Africa. And I've just been appointed this year, the director of tennis in South Africa. So something mm -hmm. I enjoy to give back to South Africa. So uh, yeah, it's been, it's been good. It's been a, it's a good journey, you know, maybe I didn't win a slam for myself, but it felt like when they won it, I was definitely part of it. And it was something that, and again, yeah. I don't know why Wimbledon. Maybe it's the way I grew <laughs> up watching Wimbledon. And it all just felt, everything felt came right. together at that, yeah. mo at that moment. You know, it's, it's one of those things where you're like, wow. Everything just came. I had a little bit of emotion, some tears. I'm like, wow, everything came together. That's awesome. It's a good story. Um, yeah. So, uh, so you've co I was going to ask who all you've coached, but it sounds like you've been with... Uh, Cobal and Farah for, for most of For a your long time. Crew. I mean, yeah, Roger Takao. I coached a little bit of Venus. I had uh, Maroc a little bit, uh, uh, Klaas and Ram. And then on yeah. the girls' side, uh, I coach a little bit uh, of Cara Black and Sanya Mirza. So, yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, yeah, and, and, and uh, that's when I was on the tour a little bit and now full time just with Cobal and Farah. Got it. Okay. Awesome. Um, so I want to ask a few more strategy questions sure. here. So, um, so a lot of the listeners are um, probably, if you're familiar with the USTA ratings, they're they're yeah. like cl club level players, so like probably four o, four five level players. Um, and a couple of questions that I get a lot is, um, and that I see on the court at these tournaments, these people. Um, playing uh people who are like scared at the net and kind of not sure what to do how would you tell somebody yeah. to think about that yeah i mean i think it's it, it, it it's a way you know what this this COVID 19 has made you kind of got go back to your roots a wall if somebody's scared of volleying go to the wall there's a yeah. person that's there's, there's something that's never gonna miss so what better way to shop on your volleys against a wall so start there uh, if you, if you, if you, a, a person playing club level, uh, I mean, you got to start. I see so many people, even at that level, just start right away. Start with volley, volley. That's the perfect way to improve your volleys. You know, even mm -hmm. just doesn't have to be a pro level, but just up and down, you know, starting sure. there, doing all in, in, in the forecourt, 
a volley cross court, line, line, cross, everything. Five minutes a day, that's going to sharpen your volleys already because now you're dealing with so many different angles. Mm -hmm. So start doing with that. And just be able to be aware as to, okay, my partner served there because what I don't see at that level is there's not really well communication. They don't have strategies like, okay, I'm serving there. There's a good chance the person, okay, the serve doesn't come at like a hundred <laughs> speed. So it's different. So you can chip lob, you can do different things, but you still need to understand what to do. Uh, I'm serving there. So you have to involve your partner. Doubles is like a relationship. If mm -hmm. you don't talk, you're gonna right. go. You're gonna get lost. So you need right. to be able to to understand what what the other uh, the person is also thinking, or involve them a little bit more. And especially at that level, you need to be able to understand that I'm serving there. This is what I want you to do. Have a few things. You as a doubles uh, team, whether you're playing for your state, whether you want to go to nationals is your goal or whatever. Have, have one or two things that you have in mind that, okay, whether you throw signs like most of the guys do, do it even at club level. Be professional yeah. as you can. Uh, right. Do all those things and be able to say, okay, if I serve wide, go there. This person does this. Do a little bit of homework. Be, I mean, yeah. if you're doing it for fun and everything, why, why are you doing it? You're doing it for fun. But when you're doing it for fun, be professional and enjoy it at the same time and do all those little things. But in terms of the volley parties, that's for me, it's probably the most basic things that you can do and just work on it. If you have a trainer or a coach that you want to work on and you feel like you're a little bit more uncomfortable, rather say, okay, for the next week, I'm going to do a little bit of this, all my stuff, but half an hour a day, whenever I have a lesson, I'm going to spend time on it. And whether it's maybe one particular volley, then do it. Don't jump around so much. Spend that particular moment with that person and quality than quantity. Rather do less, but you put quality in. Yeah. Yeah, I like that about the wall going back to the roots. That's um, mm. that's something I should probably uh, get into <laughs> myself. Um, yeah, and then so so communicating with your partner on the serve and having a play. One thing that I I like to tell um, a lot of the audience is to, especially early in a match, just kind of notice like what where the where the ball's coming back based on the serve mm. location, right? So it's mm -hmm. like you know, the first couple of games, I'm, I'm kind of reading the returner and saying like, okay, when they're stretched out wide for a forehand, they're hitting it high over the net cross court. I need to be going to get those, right? Yeah. Or, you know, they're going down the tee and they're able to pull it down the line pretty easily. So maybe a fake and then come back for the volley or mm -hmm. something like that. Yes. So really yeah. kind of observing on the court kind of what's happening and people's tendencies. Um, yeah, can help I, them always, feel I, always, comfortable. I always say like, uh, well, send somebody messages mm -hmm. early on early yeah. on send a message there i'm serving there what what what's your plan what do you like then later on you can bring that back you know you almost got to send out a few messages earlier on and see what the what you almost you, you just like like chess you just kind of feel them out and then yeah. you can understand obviously if you don't know the person then do all those things okay my favorite service there oh it's also her favorite sort or his favorite sort okay let's see there and then and then you start adjusting accordingly but uh, in terms of the club levels i mean there's so many other things you can do if you just go on about and i know our big tennis is in the u.s and the uh, uh, the clubs and you know you always see really much pretty much indian wells that that, that first weekend it's a lot yeah. of club players and state that they just come there and enjoy the tennis. And when I go in to sort of watch maybe opponents that I haven't seen, you hear them. And it's quite funny when you listen. To, oh, I, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go yeah. there. I'm going to try that. Next time we do that, we need to do that. So it's very yeah. interesting for me to sit in the crowd when they don't know who you are. And I'm just listening and, this, and, and I just <laughs> get a smile, which is right. quite fun. So, I mean, I, I love the U.S. how they enjoy the tennis. And I think it's very good. You guys have a very unique structure there which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. The, uh, the doubles is, um, really big here. I'm, I'm surprised. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Since moving to Austin, it's been one of the best ways for me to meet people and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a great community. Uh, so I wanted to, you mentioned, um, uh, well, I wanted to ask a few things about like routines on match day. Um, so, Let's say you're at a Grand Slam. It can be Wimbledon, U.S. Open, whatever. Uh, and you've got, um, what's a typical match time? Maybe like 3, 4 o'clock? 
Um, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Wimbledon is. slightly, yeah, like say, say later. For, for example, okay. mate, now we've played, obviously it's a lot easier when you're in the second week. The courts become open, it's a yeah, lot easier. Okay. It's just getting through that. There's a lot of players the first week. So you still need to find a way what works for you. That means, and, and, and obviously, as you know, a lot of these guys, the top, top guys will have the priority on the courts, the times they really want. And that's just something you have to deal with. It's just, that's just what, how it is. Yeah. So what do, you, what do you want to do? Luckily, there's indoor courts at Wimbledon as well, just outside the facility there, just opposite, you know. So mm -hmm. I like to do little things like that. And then we walk across. It's a bit of a far walk, but if that's what it takes, because you're not guaranteed to get that extra hour and a half or two hours that you really want. So how do yeah. we combine that? So we normally go there 45 minutes and then we walk over. So, okay. uh, so we try and do that. We've, we've sort of adjusted at what we like over the years. It worked at Wimbledon. Rob did the same at US Open and it worked. Cabal is more like, okay, 10, then no, I'm good. Rob is completely different. He wants a little bit extra. So I spend a little bit extra. He needs to eat balls after balls after balls. Where Cabal is more of a field player. Once he feels it a little bit here, and he's like, Jeff, I'm good. So yeah. it's, it's very different. It, it, it's, it, so on, on basically on match days, we'll be able to just warm up. Maybe there's extra things we do. And uh, when we had the time, for example, more in the second week, so now we can say, okay, we want the court for an hour. You know, now it's not about, okay, you only get half an hour. So now it's like nobody's mm -hmm. there. The, the legends comes on, the juniors, but they play a little different. They're more at the back there. So now, and we always ask them okay can we have that court right there in the corner i mean it's just literally yeah. next to the gym so we always just use that or or we say okay uh when can we have the court for an hour or something yeah but it's not sometimes the time you want and i said boys we have this choice you can have it this time but now we had less or we want that time we wait and we just adjust accordingly but on match okay. days it's not a lot it's just basically a warm-up with extra little things the day before uh on the days off yeah yeah. I, I, I would take I would take Rob individually, and I would take a ball individually. That's what okay. they like. So, I, so I always what is it like thirty minutes each or? No, actually an hour. Some an hour each. An okay. hour. Yeah, yeah, okay. back to back. I normally take because it's easier for me to take them back to back. I mean, that's Got obviously it. if you if, if we can. If not, we'll do an hour together. And are y'all working on specific things? Or are you hitting with them and warming up? Or? Um. It all depends on the, our, our opponent, who we play. Yeah. Okay, this is what oh, the guy, yeah. so it's all strategy. We play these opponents, this guy likes this. So, okay, Rob, you on this side. We do this particular, this, at this play, let's work on that. A lot of serve, a lot of, again, we're doing the basics, mm -hmm. but we've done it for a long time, but we're doing the basics. We're just basically touching again on the basics. Yeah. And, uh, and, and then we talk a little bit of strategy, then we sort of play. And then sometimes if, if we feel like we need to do it together, then we do a lot of threes. I think yeah. with three people on the court, there's so much you can do. Like I can be in the net in one corner, they're at the back, one is at the, at the net. Uh, uh, the two of them at the back, I'm in one corner. So now you have to win only at that one particular corner. So which mm. is good because suddenly when you have another person that the court becomes bigger. So those are the little things we normally work on, which I enjoy a lot more. I did it as okay. a player and uh, I brought that into my guys, which they obviously absolutely love. Uh, I'm just hitting a lot more. I'm hitting yeah. more now than I hit when I played. But uh, 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 that's what we like to do, a lot of threes. And okay. we'll bring in somebody else every once in a while or if they want to play, that we, we do that as well because at most of these events, there's always hitting partners if you really want to. Uh, sure. And, uh, and uh, uh, again, Grob wants to play points. Gabal will probably say, no, I'd rather do that, Jeff. Let me give me and you just hit out. And then out of nowhere, whatever Rob wants, if it's just me, or something, or he wants to play, then we'll find somebody for him to play against somebody else if that's what he wanted. It all depends mm -hmm. on, on these guys on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, awesome. And, and what about, you talked about strategy and like scouting for the next uh, opponent. How do you, do you all like sit down and watch match film or is that something you do and then you communicate to them? What, what does that process look like? Um, um, Rob is a guy that, doesn't like too much information. Give me one or two things. Okay, this is what I need to do. Cabal a little right. bit more. He processes and stuff. So it just depends. Again, again, one team, two different personalities, two different individuals. So you see. Sure. So my job is, and it's easier nowadays with with technology. We have the uh, tennis TV. You can sometimes I'm like, 
I spent so much time at the tennis court. I know these guys. Do I really have to go out there? Sometimes it's nice to watch it live, but sometimes, yeah. like you say, especially in the in the US, the doubles is so popular that even if I wanted to go outside, I, I'm not going to stand there for a little bit where I yeah. can rather sit because I can't find a seat. I've tried that many times, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go watch it later on. So when the guys sort of uh, get their massage, their treatment in, in the room, I normally, I would go sometimes and I watch and I said, guys, look at this. Uh, uh, um, uh, we need to go over this at this particular moment. So I'll, I'll, I'll take out a few things and point mm -hmm. it out to them. And that's normally what we will work on the following day. But if it's somebody we've practiced, we played and practiced over and over again, really, what is really going to change? You know, yeah. exactly. Same with the singles guy. They know them in and out. It's about how do you handle your nerves? Can you produce it at that particular moment? Those are the differences right. where you can come up with. But 100%, if you're somebody we're not really familiar with, uh, because most of the doubles teams, they know each other really well. And if there's somebody mm -hmm. new, because that's what happens normally at Grand Slams, the draws are bigger, so there's a lot of players you don't get to play in the thousands a lot. You know, mm -hmm. so, so obviously you do, you have to do a little bit of homework and stuff, but nowadays you, you can do it on slams. You can do thousands with the, with the tennis TV. I can just go watch it in the evening after dinner and plan. Sure. Cause that's normally what I do. I'll plan a few things and say, guys, did you watch any of it? Okay. This is all cabal. Rob likes again, that where's cabal's like, Jeff, what do we need to do? Okay. Okay. This is what I want you to do. This player does this, send the message doing this first, this, this, and then the next plan A is that plan B is this. And then we can always come back to plan uh, A. Uh, if that didn't work, you go to plan B because sometimes it works maybe just on the day, picks it up. But, but don't be alarmed sure. because you tried one or two things. Try it three, four times, then you switch or something. Sometimes it's just one of those things where you're like, all right, my coach told me to serve to the guy's point. What up? Out of nowhere, he knows he's coming to the point. He hits a winner and you're like, oh, but you told me to hit to his point. He's Okay, let him do it over and over again. Can he do it at six or right. in the break where it matters? Can he do that? So those are the questions you need to kind of ask yourself. And on the day, sometimes you say, okay, yeah, I did that. And he beat me with his weakness. You don't right. know. So you just constantly have to be aware where I feel like a lot of people, even at club level, they change completely. Yeah. Once, oh, somebody told me to hit there. Oh, look, this. no, see what yeah. he, that person can come up with it. Can he or she do that at a bigger moment? And if right. it does, then you say, well done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's funny. That's, I tell my readers that it, it's really just a game of percentages, right? And it's like, mm -hmm. uh, I, I really, one thing I try to encourage my readers to do is, is to uh, poach a little more often or play eye formation more often, just because it's, it's something that a lot of club players struggle with. Um, they don't like to give up the alley, I guess. Um, yeah. And you'll see, yeah. you'll see a lot of them standing in traditional formation and they'll mm -hmm. um they'll really kind of hug that that singles mm -hmm. line almost all the way over to the alley mm -hmm. and it's uh it's it's hard for me to watch but i'm like okay they beat you down the line once but they mm -hmm. also missed the previous two attempts did you count yeah. those like and um yeah it's just percentages like can they do it consistently yeah. like you said it's kind of like how do you view it do you view it half empty or half full how do you view the glass and also the other thing is how many coaches even at club level practice that particular right. format changing it up even right. here in south africa at mm -hmm. at at, uh, at school level you don't see it you see the staying back i was watching in the beginning of the year uh, 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 a kid that I coach and I went to watch, he plays a big school. We've got in the beginning of the year, there's big school matches. He was in the final, they're playing at home turf. And I'm like, wow, I can't believe what I'm seeing. I'm like, yeah. wow, I, I, I could just picture if you just have done this, if you've just had done <laughs> this, you would have made, you would have made the court so much smaller. If you've done this, this is, this is how the, the geometry of the court works. If you do this, the chances of him beating you there, it's very minimum. So why not do that or do yeah. this? They, this person for there's no chance he's going to hit the chip lock so closer to the net but obviously right. if you know huh you might do it then it, you put doubt in that yeah. person at the net so again you got to come up with so many different things and uh, and obviously women's tennis is different to to, to men's tennis uh, club level tennis is different to professional tennis so you constantly sure. have to adjust but there's always something you can borrow from each one of of those uh, uh, um, situations yeah absolutely absolutely 
Um, so a couple more questions on, uh, on Farah and Cabal. Um, what, what's one thing that you think they do better than any other doubles team? Um, I just think now lately they compete better and they believe more. I wouldn't mm -hmm. say, uh, like I mentioned, the one area we worked on a lot was the second serve. Uh, mm -hmm. We do that. That's not particular. Yeah, they won in the world. They won two slams. Something we work towards. Uh, that's not one particular thing that they do well. Okay. Uh, much better. I think they they in one of the best shapes that they've ever been. So that's a very positive already. Uh, but I think it's a, it's not just one thing. It's, it, it, it's a combination of a few things. If you take sure. a ball on, the, on one hand and you take Rob on the other hand, we worked a lot on his forehand return over and over again. And the nice thing about it, there's still so much room for improvement on certain things that I've noticed that I, mm -hmm. I feel like, yes, at the U.S., uh, 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 they didn't particularly play as well as I'm up, but yet they still won. Mm -hmm. That to me was key. You know, not like sure. I've seen them play and serve, but obviously the conference is there now. Previous years, they would have lost those matches. Like uh, if you take a few things that happened uh, uh, two years ago at the US Open playing uh, Mike Bryan and the critical moment in the match, in the third set, did this, they knew and they changed their mind because he thought, okay, but he did this because, again, a message they sent early on in the match. Yeah. You know, little things like that. So those things are, for me, uh, a, a very big difference by... By, for me, I was, I was always a returner that, 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 that feels like you've got to return with what you've got. If this guy knows you should do that, don't think too much about, is this guy playing eye formation? Is he going left or right? You yeah. pick your spot, you go to that particular spot, and you execute as best right. because people can fake. You remember, you gotta, if you fake and come back, I mean, it's still a risk you take, but it's a good thing because some people fall for the fake. How well some people do the fake better than others. Yeah. But, you know, if you do those, if somebody serves there, those are your options. So you give them the mm -hmm. options and do it. So you decide what option you want. Do you want to go with option A, option B? And you just execute. If somebody serves there, then you do that. Yeah. You know, doubles, it, 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 doubles is a game of mistakes. You're not always going to hit that many winners. So sure. how do you force that person to make the mistake? Not once, but consistently under pressure all the time. Yes, the, the, it's become so big. Returns has become better uh, serves. But again, if you serve your particular spot, it takes the return a little bit away. That's where yeah. it comes down to second serves. Mm -hmm. How brave are you to do things on a second serve? You know, it, we can all talk about first serve there and there, but when you have that, that bit of a chance, that second mm -hmm. serve, second to return, Okay, now let's see. And that's Great. why I like what I did with my guys. We play so many variations of points, even the two of them playing doubles, cross courts, but even singles points. I make them even stay back. I, we play one game where you have to chip, one game where you have to serve and volley both, one game only second serve. So there's a wow. variety of, there's many things I, I throw in with them. And, 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 and it's quite nice for me. There's a lot of things that I throw in where Rob, like, obviously, Gabal's going to win. I'm not like, I said, yeah, but how are we going to learn? There's a lot yeah. of things that, that Gabal, I said, this is the way we learn. There's going to be something like chip because you don't know if you sort of all four court you do and it's a little ball or you just have to chip and feel your hands. That's uh, awesome. uh, there's so many variable things. And I think we don't do that anymore. And yeah. we need to be able to do that. That's why I started with my guys. Little mini tennis, little does. Just feel like go back to old school with some of the new. The game is changing so much. Sure. There's so many different variables that you can use. You don't know what particular shot you're going to come up with. But you feel yeah. comfortable doing that. Yeah, and, I'd love and, to and see those drills. I'd love to get like a yeah. list of those drills. <laughs> I want to do yeah. this for myself. I mean, I mean, I mean, well, it becomes spur of the moment. Sometimes mm -hmm. I have one thing in my mind and sometimes I'm like, you know what? You also got to judge your players on the day. Sometimes I have something on my sure. mind, what I want to do today, but you don't know from the match before how those players are feeling waking up in the morning. So you have sure. to readjust on that as well. I had mm -hmm. something in mind doing for an hour and a bit, but no, how much, how, what quality am I going to get from my player? If I only do 45 minutes, it's supposed to be an hour and a half. I'll, okay, then I leave it at 45, but, but at least I, get, I, I got the quality that I wanted. So right. it's, it, you almost get a judge on a day-to-day -day basis, although you as the coach have 
a, a sort of set game plan in mind. You need to be able to adjust. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it sounds like maybe the thing that they've been better at than, than other doubles teams is maybe their consistency to just commitment um, mm -hmm. on improving on a consistent basis. Yeah. That I mean, that, that's basically been our goal. Yeah. Like you said, not it's like just trusting the area, process, like people yeah. say, and just committing to exactly. it on, exactly. a, on a consistent and, and, basis. Cause that's hard. And a, on a consistent basis. And then, and I said to them, you know, you guys can set yourself up pretty much for a good number of years, but how do you do it? Go, mm -hmm. we take it, you're in a 50, 50 partnership. It's a business. Yeah. How do you do it? Right. Let's plan like businesses do. How, what a successful business do? How do they do it? Let's plan. And this is what we go towards. Those are the steps. Let's tick it off. Okay. Sure. Next step. Let's tick that one off. So, that's how I like to approach things. Yeah. Yeah. It makes a ton of sense. Um, so let's finish up with uh, a couple of uh, just quick rapid fire questions. Um, can be pretty uh, short answers or, or long okay. if, if you have a, a story or anything. Um, <laughs> uh, so what is your, uh, when you're playing doubles, what is your favorite place to be on the doubles court? So server, server's partner, returner, returner's partner. Um. I like to be at the net. So I like it when my partner serves. So I feel like I need to, I, I, I want to get involved as much as, yeah. Yeah, that's my favorite too. I think that's the right answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is, uh, what's your favorite ball to hit a winner from? So for example, um, for myself, my favorite, uh, my favorite shot to hit a winner off of where I, you know, I hit the shot and I'm like really excited about it and all that is uh, when I'm the returner's partner and my, re my partner hits a low return and I poach. So poaching off the returns, my favorite uh, shot to hit okay. a winner off of what's, what's your favorite shot in doubles? Mine is the lob. The lob. I like it when, yeah, I don't know why, but uh, <laughs> especially when somebody is a good a volley or something and I know for, uh, not for a fact, but that person is closing, he knows it's a good volley and then I disguise it at the last minute or something. I, wow. I, I, I don't know. I enjoy that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm and, sure and, and I would the, like the, that more if I knew thing, how to do it. The thing <laughs> is, even if you know it's coming and I beat you with the lob, that's even more thrilling for me. Yeah. Yeah, they like start to reach back and just can't get. Spinning. And you still beat them. You like yeah. all right now if you a good love. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is? Let's see. What's your favorite uh, tennis book? Um, I th I think I enjoyed which I don't know. I don't think my wife realized the one with Rafa, uh, Rafa's book when he won woman that long match against. Uh, um, okay. Um, yeah, it's with better, the, the 2008 at, one. At, yes, at Wimbledon, she actually bought it on the airport uh, on our way to Zanzibar on honeymoon, and I yeah, read it. Strokes into that. of Genius is, it, is yeah. that what it's called? Some, I, I don't know what is. I can't remember what it is, but I remember watching the match, and yeah. I, when I went over the book, I was literally I could picture the match. So yeah. I, I really enjoyed that, and obviously, you know, there's so many different ones with uh, Brad Gilbert, the uh, Agassi book. But for me, I really enjoyed the Rafa yeah. book just because how his uncle, when he won, remember uh, coming to Sun City in South Africa, then he did it. Oh, do I have to practice? Yes, you do. Da, da, da. And just the way how he is humble. There's a lot of respect for him, so uh, I really enjoyed that. Awesome. Um, what's a, a favorite non-tennis book? Um, I actually, um, um, uh, there's a few, I mean, I like the ones with, uh, Richard Branson, very short, screw it, let's do it. And it does way how he started off the, mm -hmm. those ones. Um, uh, uh, I read one of our, um, our rugby captain's hero, Sia Kalishi that won the world cup last year. I enjoyed his book recently. So yeah, there's a few, there's a few. Yeah. Um, uh, that I enjoy. What is um, your favorite? What, what was your favorite tennis tournament as a player? Um, as a player, look, oh, it's a tough one. Um, <laughs> I would say 
Australia has always been a, a fun one for me. I always enjoyed the Australian yeah. Open just because I've been home now for six weeks. I go over there, same climate, same everything. People are so welcoming there. So I really enjoy that time of the year. But again, Wimbledon has a different history yeah. or something to it. So, yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I went to my first Australian Open this year. And I, it's my favorite tournament yeah, I've been to. For yeah, sure. it's, it's, it's really the way they do things. It's really, it's, uh, yeah. I enjoy it. Um, what about as a coach? Is it the same? Same, same for me. Same. I enjoy it, yeah. 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 Okay. And then last question. Uh, what is a, a tennis story that you've never told anyone? <laughs> oh, dear. I think I've told everything. I'm a sucker for that. <laughs> um, then just a, a maybe, good tennis story. Maybe to, maybe. Some, to somebody that I've lost that I never should have lost to. I didn't, <laughs> I, yeah, I didn't enjoy that. And that was purely because of uh, uh, my own fault. I was going out, going crazy. And I thought, yeah, I should be able to beat this guy. And uh, yeah, it just didn't happen. I lost, just made me realize. But This was, was when change. you were playing? On tour, I was I was just starting off, and the, the kid oh, yeah. was younger than me. Yeah, yeah, so I don't like telling that story or yeah. knowing somebody <laughs> know that story because I know that was very and that that basically changed me professionally. Yeah, and I'm like, all right, now can't you get away need with to that. change. Yeah, yeah, you can't you can't be thinking going out with friends and stuff, and you're playing a little tournament and you lost. I just thought, okay, I'm better than the kid. I I should be, and I, there I just changed completely. Right. Lost the yeah, match. I felt like this big, and I was like, "Done, no yeah. more." So told, yeah. told my friends whenever I'm home, instead of I'm going to you guys once a week, you're gonna come to me. We're gonna have what we call barbecue or braai, and that's it. I'm here now practicing, and you guys are happy. You're gonna go to work. You can go out, but this is what I do. So I changed a lot. Sure, awesome. That's yeah. how you learn. Yeah. Um, Awesome. Well, Jeff, thanks for hopping on. I appreciate it. Um, it was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll uh, do it again and meet in person one day at uh, one of the tournaments, hopefully. Sure. When everything starts back up. Yeah, let's hope everything is. Yeah. And then one day where everybody's allowed, let's, let's, let's see. It'd be nice to catch up. Then awesome. thanks for having me, Will. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks again. Appreciate it.